uh, devolution. And when it began, the money to the counties was restricted to 15%. Now we are doing an upwards of uh, 30%. So for me, I feel mm -hmm. the services are, are closer to the people. Mm -hmm. I feel things can be better. Uh, but uh, where we are now, there is more money in the counties. Uh, however, my concern, again, in specific regard to devolution, mm -hmm. is not all services that should be that should have been devolved that are devolved according to the fourth schedule of the constitution. We mm -hmm. have issues um, now. We have COVID, and you can see the counties really struggled. If you remember, if you remember the updates by CS Mutai while we began, mm -hmm. some counties were even doing only one ICU bed. Mm -hmm. Even mm -hmm. even when the money came for COVID, the counties were still complaining that they only got five percent of mm -hmm. the shares, and majority was retained by by the national government. Mm -hmm. When you look at agriculture, which is the backbone of our society, it's almost semi-devolved. All the agricultural extension officers are maintained in the national government. Mm -hmm. If you look at even the budget, because for me I say, uh, Hillary, you'll put your money where your mouth is. If you look at the division of revenue stalemate, mm -hmm. uh, whereby roughly the counties are fighting for roughly 345 billion versus the national government, which is having 3 trillion. So you can still see mm -hmm. that there is a, a big stalemate. Yet uh, today, Senator, the, the, even the committee that was constituted uh, as a tenth attempt to to put an end to the stalemate, even mm -hmm. them, they, they said that we can we 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 are at our end. So for me, I see as if. Um, when I look at the constitution in terms of devolution, yes, we are happy we, we have devolution. But can more be done? Yes, a lot more can be done. Uh, you just mentioned of the statement that is ongoing in the Senate about the uh, formula uh, of sharing the revenues. And I remember um, the, Sen the speaker for Senate, Ken Lusaka, in one of the local stations, he was saying, we are complaining it has been nine, nine uh, postponement and adjournment. There could be even 20 because the matter is as serious as we, it could be and it should be as serious for sharing the revenue. Now, speaking of which, we have the health having been devolved to counties and we have had our nurses and our doctors striking every now and then. Was it a miss or it was a hit? Uh, for me, health has been an extreme miss, and um, I'll quote uh, my governor, Modominjoke, once he was um, elected in uh, 2017, he actually said that health should go back to the national uh, government, but it's not a walk in the park because these are things in the constitution, mm -hmm. and it would require amendments to deal with the issue. I'll give an example of, uh, you mentioned nurses and doctors, I'll give an example of teachers. Mm -hmm. If you look at teachers, teachers have the uh, Teacher Service Commission, which is an almost national uh, body that caters for the interest of teachers. Mm -hmm. But now uh, doctors, uh, doctors and nurses have been left in limbo. Well, they have the KMPDU, right. they, still, they are still in limbo because um, who exactly are you negotiating with? We know when you see Socion, there is an exact structure and pattern under which he is going to negotiate for the teachers. But when you look at uh, nurses and doctors, some are under the payroll of the county government, which means um, they are left to negotiate sometimes with the Council of Governors, sometimes with the national government, that is the CS. Mm -hmm. So there is that limbo in the organization of the structures uh, um, in, when, when I look at nurses and doctors. However, in such a critical time, uh, they mm -hmm. should not strike. And the saddest thing about the strike by nurses and doctors is not just um, a matter of finances, a matter, a matter of being paid. Apart mm -hmm. from that, they are complaining about issues of PPEs. They are the ones who are on the front line. They feel that they are risking their lives. So if it was only a matter of maybe resources would say, Ah, maybe we don't have enough money, maybe. But now you're looking on the wake of which COVID funds have also disappeared. Mm -hmm. doctors, uh, doctors, nurses are not being paid well. They are working um, extra hours. They are the essential services. And especially the situation whereby they don't have enough PPEs. I mean, that is, uh, uh, if yeah, I was yeah. one of them, I'd, I'd definitely be leading the strike. That's quite true. Now, with the, ten, uh, the 2010 constitution, there were formulations of commissions, uh, about around seven of them. Mm -hmm. And I, I want us to look at, at those that are 
close to the person. Uh, we're speaking of, about the land commission, mm -hmm. which came at a time when the, the land crisis has been a big problem to Kenyans. And the BBI, um, according to the makers, the, the, it will come to solve the problem. At this point, do you think 10 years down the line, the land commission has been able to settle the disputes that have been there? We've been, we've been seeing uh, title deeds being issued. But of course, we also have the, uh, the displaced persons. We have people who have no mm -hmm. homes, yet we have a commission constituted by the our own constitution. Mm -hmm. What do you make of that? Um, to give a background of the constitution of Kenya 2010, the constitution was, if you remember, was necessitated by a crisis, the 207 post-election violence, mm -hmm. that uh, made it right for us to have a new constitution. If you remember 205, we had uh, the WACO draft that, WACO bombers draft that did not see the light of day. Mm -hmm. But when we had the crisis in 207, it created the conditions necessary to have a new constitution. Mm -hmm. There was ethnic divisions which uh, necessitated uh, even devolution to come to place. Mm -hmm. And uh, we know the issues of land are a weighty matter, they are a community matter, and uh, they, they get to the heart of the people. Uh, for me, even the issuing of uh, title deeds and even handling of IDPs, it's still not uh, a walk in the park. Until we're able to remove the emotive issues in land, mm -hmm. I don't think we, we will benefit. Um, I'd like to give an example of um, the Kenyatta's family trust and land, whereby land does not belong to a specific person but is held is held by the family. Yes, you have access, this is your land, you can build, but you cannot uh, mm -hmm. sell. The land is uh, managed um, is managed commercially, whereby you can, uh, pla or even the case of Del Monte, whereby you can do your pineapples, you can do, um, uh, basically I'm talking about produ productivity. Mm -hmm. So for me, I feel like um, Kenyans need to move away. As much as we have um, that cultural attachment to land, we need to move away from, uh, th that that deep attachment that will not even make land productive. Uh, a case of example, Hillary, and I'll give you um, a, as an individual, uh, your family. Mm -hmm. If you have land and everybody is given a piece of land and you build this one, builds this one, builds, it just looks chaotic. Mm -hmm. But if you have one family uh, home and your and uh, the rest of the land is used to productive use, maybe you put uh, zara or the, you the, put the maize. The traditional way of Kavili, the, Yes. Mm -hmm. If you do that, for me, I feel that a land will be more productive. But the moment you do title deeds, we've even seen cases whereby uh, young people are given title deeds and they disappear. They go to Mombasa, then they come back uh, uh, and they want uh, still to be given a, a piece of land. Yet they were already given their own piece of land. Mm -hmm. So for me, I understand. And then the case of, of course, IDPs uh, is different. And I'm glad uh, most of them have been sorted as far as I know. Mm -hmm. uh, and I hope they will be able to reclaim their life and uh, start on a new foot. Okay, on a light note, do you think the, the BBI will, will be addressing that particular issue because it is in the report? Uh, I think it will, but when I look at the BBI, I see that most of the recommendations will need actually an act of parliament. Mm -hmm. And um, I heard Baba say that reggae will continue in September. Uh, <laughs> from what I get, a referendum is, if you remember the other referendum, it was a yes and no question. So mm -hmm. I don't see matters of land arising mm -hmm. and you'll be asked about land. Specifically, it will be a yes or no question that will be, will be framed. Do we move, uh, do you want money to the county government to improve from 15% to 45%? Then it's a yes or no question. Mm -hmm. Do you want the position of a prime minister or uh, the office of the opposition leader to be funded? It will be more of a yes or no no question but for matters um, of land that can be handled by NLC that can be handled by the mis Ministry of um, Lands uh, whereby they can draft bills that are that that um, are in line with the BBI report mm -hmm. and they, they they can go through policy through the executive and they can be uh, through also through the legislature and then also the ministries department and agencies the MDS can now implement some of those reforms but a case of it going straight to the referendum no a case of it being adopted by an act of parliament definitely yes all right let's move to a different commission um uh, this one has has had a, a whole of a 
its own shares in regards to human rights. I'm speaking about the national police. Mm -hmm. um, we've had cases of police brutality. We have had cases of our, how our police are being treated. They pay, uh, being told they will come back to live with the civilians now. And the, the, there has been a lot of issues. We saw the power being uh, formed and uh, we have seen our police being disciplined. And of course, we've also seen uh, them uh, being given new uniforms, as in the, the whole department has changed. But to this end, the police state in our country, do you think it is at a, at a better point moving forward? Um, when, when I look at uh, the commissions um, in the constitution, I, I, I admire the intent of the authors of the constitution. But for me, I feel like, uh, uh, like something like police, uh, police reforms and IPOA and the, it's like uh, you're, you're trying to change uh, the forest, but the monkeys are still the same. Mm -hmm. So for me, I feel like without proper adequate police reforms, for example, if you look at how our policemen are trained in K Kiganjo and other areas, it's still the same. It's still the same drilling. It's still the same. Do you have 32 set of teeth? Are you tall? Do you have a gap? Can you run? How fast can you run? Mm -hmm. We've not moved to a section whereby we are looking also at um, intelligence and uh, things of that nature. So for me, I feel like, yes, we can have all these commissions, but for us to uh, cure the ail in uh, police brutality, we need to, to really reform how they are being trained. Uh, that's training and development. We need better pay. We need more educated uh, police force that can be able to impact uh, effectively. If you remember when the president was us was issuing the curfew and saying you should not be outside by seven or nine, Kenyans were asking, I'm not interested. Mm -hmm. If you remember, I'm well, not interested. <laughs> yes, I'm not uh, interested in what I understood. Mm -hmm. I know what I understood, mm -hmm. but in, I'm interested in what the police understood. Mm -hmm. If you remember the case of Likoni, yeah, whereby yeah. Uh, citizens of the country had to wait for the ferry it was at six it's not the curfew is at seven it was at six and there was tea, uh, tear gas lobster and you would even see whatsapp videos of police prepping because you know they've mm. been wame kwa kwa kambi they've been kwa kambi and now they are ready to use rungus and this external forces so for me i think there needs to be that change in mind uh, mindset that shift in attitude for mm -hmm. us to move forward and i wonder in the curriculum where they are being taught to run where they are being taught to use guns I, I, and i hear the training is about six months mm -hmm. my question is are they taught about mental health are they taught about emotional intelligence because by the time i meet you outside the curfew at nine i should know maybe some women are pregnant maybe does not show i should be able to have emotional in intelligence mm -hmm. to be able to tell for me i believe if the nis can be trained as well as they have you know you, me and you know you can't even tell someone who's nis mm -hmm. and so, yeah. they're implanted everywhere if the nis can be trained as well as they are trained then also the police can be uh, trained so having commissions is a good thing having the likes of I ipoa is a good thing to monitor that but if you don't change uh, the road from inside out the road cannot come from outside in and also for me instead of top down approach whereby you have ipoa uh, mandating uh, how police should behave going to the bottom, I believe it should be from the bottom up. Mm -hmm. I believe that kind of an approach, just shifting the manage managerial skills and uh, training and development will go a long way. Because uh, as Hillary, you're also taught how to conduct yourself uh, in your profession. Same way, I believe that can be impacted in Keganjo. True. Now, 10 years down the line, the judiciary. Mm -hmm. uh, people and majority of persons have been saying it. the judiciary has been an impediment to the success of winning against corruption, uh, even the cases of uh, police brutality or anything that concerns uh, human rights. Now, do you think the judiciary is trying to balance between power and responsibility? Uh, for me, this is a, such a, a weighty matter. And... Uh, the, ju the lawyers themselves say justice delayed is justice uh, denied. Mm -hmm. And I feel like judiciary has been a thorn in the flesh against the fight uh, against corruption. Mm -hmm. Because if you look at even Sirisia MP Lusike, how many years, from 2007, uh, the main scandal happened in 2007. Mm -hmm. Yes, we are glad um, the judiciary, the DPP, they are doing their work. But ah, how many years later? We have to wait. Mm -hmm. 
uh, yet you know justice de denied is justice even is like where will i get this money mm -hmm. where, where will i because you already used the money long time ago you even thought you'd never be caught mm -hmm. so for me okay the judiciary is trying but i feel like where we are now there is a lot of uh, cry cry babyism whereby there is complaint for example uh, uh, the judicial service commission the, the list of 40 judges that should have been signed by the president mm -hmm. We are like, okay, if these 40 judges are saying, what, what could change? I mean, what could change? And some of the fundamental questions we're asking, even in terms of uh, the CJ uh, Maraga, um, he had five months, five months for him, for us to have a new CJ. I think now it's even less. Yeah, yeah. We, we are, we are, we are I think it's two. Now it's two. We, mm -hmm. are we are fishing for a new CJ. I mean, what is the legacy? What is the Because when I remember Mutunga from the get-go, there was a lot of fire. There was a lot of changes even changes in attire, there was a difference. What is the legacy? You nullify so, the elections. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Most of the people will remember him. Yes, yes, of course he'll be remembered for Africa and Kenya being one of the first cases for nullifying the election and uh, causing <laughs> the president to go for a, a second term. Mm -hmm. But in terms of reforms in the judiciary, even when COVID came, the judiciary was first one of the f uh, first um, departments or organizations to fully close shop. You would see the transition to digital and you remember harvey in fact i'm, I'm happy that lsk chair nelson harvey has been very articulate and saying these issues and saying that we are even doing the cases um online using zoom but mm -hmm. judges are, have not been empowered they, they don't know how to use this zoom mm -hmm. they don't know it's a process so for me i feel like um the judiciary has uh, a lot more to offer and i hope uh, so the, the recommended i've seen some people in twitter saying justice mombi mm -hmm. and the likes um i hope they'll be able to bring change because at, a, at the end leadership also comes from the top mm -hmm. so for me i feel that the judiciary has been a, a thorn in the flesh and um, even to the executive because some of the things for example if you remember the huduma number now people are asking what was the point of them Mm -hmm, the mm -hmm, huduma mm -hmm. number civil society went to court prevented huduma number but when you think about it critically hillary especially in the wake of covid if the government hid your data uh, through huduma number you are asked how many children do you have do you have a spouse can you imagine even in terms of uh, um, contact tracing mm -hmm. it, would have been it would have been good and when you look at the usa they have they have the social numbers and these social numbers even enables you to get a food stamp so now we, we, we refused uh, the Huduma number, yet right now government now has to rely on the office of the president through the DCCs, the PCs, to be able to get the list of um, uh, people who need help. And, and I understand they've been getting about uh, 4,000 per month. Mm -hmm. But imagine the case whereby if we had this Huduma number, things would have been easy. All the data would have been aggregated NSSF, NHIF, but now we have a backlog. So s some of um, the cases that have been stopped or some of the things that have been prevented from being done, they, they don't make sense. Mm -hmm. They don't make sense at all. I, I'm glad you brought the issue of Huduma number, and um, it's not in the public domain, I'm sure. The people don't know who stopped it or what happened. Majority say Gavali to Cheza, because mm -hmm. they do not know what yeah, the, happened. The because actually, I think we need, um, is it called public education something? Mm -hmm. Because people do not follow up why things have happened or what has gone on. Now, before we go to another uh, commission, I, you've mentioned of uh, Nelson Harvey, and there's something he said during this uh, period yeah, uh, where 10. he said that con mm, the constitution is a great inconvenience to the political class. Is an inconvenience to the political class. That is, the problem is not the chair, but the person who occupies the chair. We cannot trust the current political class with amendment of the constitution two years to a general election implement to implement the constitution. I think he's trying to talk about the BBI that mm. uh, it has brought an uproar. Mm. Uh, we're not talking about the BBI here. <laughs> Uh, there's a lot of issues around it. Mm -hmm. But now, things have been happening. And uh, actually, let's move to the parliament. Okay. Uh, we saw the purge a few months ago. Was it May or June? Mm -hmm. There was a purge trying to cleanse, maybe because of the baby or something, the interest of the persons there. Mm -hmm. But do you think the parliament should be independent mm -hmm. from the uh, committees of, uh, of health or anything else, mm -hmm. the committees that are there, mm -hmm. and the whole house should be independent. Mm -hmm. Do you think the current house we have under this constitution, they have, been, uh, they have been misusing and abusing the powers they have all in the name of pleasing our leader? 
Um, I think asking the question of whether uh, the legislature is independent is quite a tricky one because number one, when you look at members of parliament and senate and senators, mm -hmm. they are brought uh, forth by parties, and uh, these parties, if you remember, the likes of. Um, Millicent Omanga, when they were subjected to a disciplinary committee, they were out here doing what they want until a disciplinary committee was formed and they were asked, mm -hmm. come. The likes of Aisha Juma, Aisha Juma, who are doing everything they want, then they, re they forget that mm -hmm. they were nominated by political parties to be able to run and win the elections. So in terms of independence, it's very tricky because actually political parties have the mandate to reconstitute committees anytime they feel like. Um, uh, for me, I feel like political parties must be empowered uh, according to the Political Parties Act and they must whip uh, members who do not um, fall in line, mm -hmm. especially because political parties are vehicles to ascending to power, number one. Number two, these vehicles of ascending to powers have a specific direction where they want to go. Whether it is a good or a bad direction is another um, directive, but uh, political parties must put um, their, their foot down. So uh, for me, when I saw the changes in uh, committees and the reshuffling mm -hmm. and Irungo Kangata taking uh, uh, shape, w was, w w w was some of the people represented for leadership the best? I'd say no. Mm -hmm. But did political parties uh, exercise their rights? Mm -hmm. Yes, they did, and in, 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 in good faith. And if this was, happen more, was happening more frequently, I'd be scared. But now it's... Uh, about one, two to one and a half years to the elections. That's okay. But if this was a weekly affair that you mess up, I mean, some of the, if, if you remember someone like Murkomen had gone on offense for so many times, he had been given chances and chances and chances and chances mm -hmm. to tow the party line. And he did not tow the party line. So for him to be, to be removed from Senate majority leader and to be given a chair of a uh, committee, I think for me it's uh, perfectly in order, but the only disadvantage is now the quality of debates in parliament. Mm -hmm. Because if someone is ill-suited, I mean when I looked at the division of revenue bill, even when you look at standing orders, Sakaja would wake up on standing orders and say, Madam Speaker, if it's Ma uh, Kamar who's handling, and saying, Kamar, we cannot handle we, you ca members of parliament cannot just stand, or senators cannot just stand on standing orders, and they are, they are not quoting the standing orders. So you would notice there is uh, some sort of lethargy. Mm -hmm. Like you are, not, you, you are not in the know about the standing orders of parliament. You would notice, um, what would they call it, amateur. Mm -hmm. You notice this form of amateur. And this would now would make people like Murkom and Shine on Twitter and the likes because they understood what was going on. I, I think people like... Um, Kangata just woke up in the middle, in, uh, middle of the night and they're like, wow, now you've been given this position. And yet you do not understand the nitty gritties. So I think this is also a lesson for um, any, young lead, uh, any young person out there who wants to be a member of parliament or senate. Mm -hmm. There's no shortcut. Read. One day you might wake up and you're the senate majority leader mm -hmm. and you don't understand the procedures on how things uh, are going. So for me, uh, with parliament, I also think though this is one of the weakest parliament we've ever had. It's not even me who said, J.B. Muturi himself, mm -hmm. um, the speaker for the National Assembly. You've seen numerous interviews by Lusaka and he's saying it's not my fault that we have mm -hmm. a weak... Just tell me, yeah. yeah, it's not my fault that we have um, a weak senate. I can only give the direction, but at the end of the day... Mm -hmm. And if you remember... The previous parliament, I believe this is the 12th parliament. Yeah, if you yeah, remember yeah, the 11th parliament, the 10th parliament, we had very fiery leaders. So now to see the likes of uh, Sakaja, Sakaja and Mutula Kilonzo Jr. Mm -hmm. emerging as the, the brains. There. Yes, being the youthful leaders and emerging as the brains. People who've not been able to step out of their political parties and say, look, mm -hmm. this is my political party decision. One shilling, one, one man, one vote. But is it fair to the person in Turkana? Mm -hmm. Is it fair to the person in Samburu? Is it fair to the whole, uh, to the whole republic as, uh, in general? And they're like, no. So you see, these are the new Orangos. The Orangos mm -hmm. now are taking the back seat, and the new Orangos are Kina Sakaja and Kina Motula Kilonzo Jr. So you see people who've been able to be objective, have been able to, to step up. Mm -hmm. um, also, if you remember the outsa of uh, Deputy Speaker, former Deputy Speaker, Kedure okay, Kendeke. Kendeke yeah. Yes, and you would see uh, the interviews, and you would see that 
people are really struggling to remove him because they see he's fit for the job. I'm telling you today we'll not be going for the tenth discussion on division of revenue bill if Lusaka had Kendeke on his team. I'm mm -hmm. telling you for a fact. And you can see even the type of quality debates he brings to the floor. We, we, we have uh, majority and uh, minority leaders who can't whip votes. <laughs> now, uh, I want to marry the parliament and the commission of uh, uh, salaries. Mm -hmm. Because they, they, yes. they've been working like uh, the, the SRC says something, the parliament comes with something. Especially when they are passing bills uh, to amend their pay. Mm. They increase their pay or the other, uh, last month they were, they were working on their pension, pension for yes. people who worked for like many years ago. Mm -hmm. Now, do you think the SRC has been able to weather the storms from the parliament? I think that's um, almost an impossible task because um, I believe uh, salaries and remuneration commission should stick to uh, public servants uh, mm -hmm. because once parliament establish its own, uh, so we have the parliamentary service commission and then we have the public service commission. Mm -hmm. The salaries and remuneration commission can work with PSC, but the parliamentary service commission is a very strong institution and I'm glad it was formed because it was, it was to separate and to give independence to parliament. parliament. Mm -hmm. So uh, salaries and remuneration commission, it's very difficult for them uh, to harmonize. And when I looked at the debate on pension, I, I was so shocked that that debate can pass so fast, yet counties are suffering waiting for the division of revenue bill. Mm -hmm. And it's very unfair, especially because the, the, uh, the amounts they're asking for, they want it to be backdated. So it, uh, qua, the taxpayer is really suffering. So for me, I think that Salaries and Remuneration Commission is um, weak. Mm -hmm. And um, when, when I look at the commissions, in fact, there was, there's also the uh, Commission on Revenue Allocation. I mean, these commissions are there, but f first of all, remember, even the chairs of these commissions are, are even um, uh, sworn, in, sworn in by the presidents, mm -hmm. by the president himself. So you can imagine they are still under the, by the executive, because if as a, as a the chair of a commission... has to go to the president. Yes, even IBC as a commission. Mm -hmm. So when you look at all these commissions, they still... A thorn in the flesh. And uh, you know if you're independent, Hillary, if I'm an independent woman, mm -hmm. I do not need to go out here, keep on claiming. You will just see automatically how I walk, how I talk. It will mean I'm independent. Mm -hmm. So first of all, the communication, the uh, co commission starting with independent, down. Indip IBC, down. Actually, I want us to go to IBC. It should be independent. And the same case happens to the EECC. Yes. These are the departments to fight corruption, and the other one is for elections mm. but it so happens they are never independent mm. was it a hit or a miss for our for our for our constitution to have such uh -huh. what, what's the problem with i this? think it's a perfect hit the problem is implementation and interference by the executive mm -hmm. and also to some extent interference by the judiciary and that's why you asked the previous question uh is what's the the problem with the judiciary is it doing good is it doing bad for example when you look at iebc you remember the stalemate, Kinakoni Nkada, Kinanani, the commissioners who resigned, and then now we have a situation whereby the commission is, according to the constitution, mm -hmm. improperly, imp improperly constituted. What has the judiciary said about it? Now, and these are court cases. Mm -hmm. We are just in uh, some sort of stalemate that it's okay, which is very dangerous two years to the general. Election. election so you wonder or the bbi if it goes yes. to the referendum yes so mm -hmm. look at it this way so there's the two years to the general election there's a legacy uh, which should be should be maintained there is a deputy who is on a full campaign run there is a former prime minister who wants to do uh, reggae and uh, the bbi mm -hmm. and now you wonder so after and a confused the, opposition yes and a confused uh, in fact uh, masakaru is famous for saying uh, that the, the ruling party is in bed with the opposition. <laughs> so you don't even know in parliament who's the opposition, who's the ruling party. Mm -hmm. So in that midst of confusion, and there are people who thrive in confusion. I mean, and even when you look at the PACs, if you remember Isaac Hassan, uh, when, uh, when he resigned, we had to pay him 200 million. 
-hmm. So it's a loss for us whether our Fula Chebukati stays or he doesn't stay or everybody has to go home because if their contract says five years it has, and to, end. It has to end and if it doesn't you have to give them a golden handshake and pay them beforehand mm -hmm. so you, you you don't even know is it good if he stays and we just pay him for staying around the office or if he goes because you're paying him either way whether he stays or the, whether and they he will goes. See, they, will, they will oversee another election let's move to the cabinet secretaries mm -hmm. this constitution came about with uh, changing the format of the ministries we have the techno other than the politicians. Now, do you think it has been a good idea so far? I would say it has not been a good idea so far because if you look the track record of the CSS during uh, Kibaki's time and now, mm -hmm. you can't compare the quality, you can't compare the project. If you look at GDP, Kenya's G GDP growth rate uh, during Kibaki's time and during Uhuru's time, it's it, it's, I mean, it is saddening. If you look at uh, debt, public debt ratio, uh, still the same um, thing. So for me, I, I believe we need to go back to a system. The technocrats have not shown value for their money. In fact, we are happier if the technocrats remain in their good positions and we need members. In fact, the problems happening in parliament is because if you look at it this way, Hillary, mm -hmm. there is no real connection now between parliament and the executive. You know whereby Kitambo, a, 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 a CS used to sit in parliament, used to be a member of a constituency and could not miss eight executive sittings. Mm -hmm. So now when a CS, um, a CS for Health or when Matiangi appears before a parliamentary committee, this is a demigod. You can see the way even like the, the media was restricted when Matiangi had gone to be questioned. Right. This is a demigod. But if this guy was a member of parliament who you would see every day, who would not miss eight ex uh, consecutive sessions unless uh, by exclusive permission and by writing to the speaker, you are peers. So member to parliament to member of parliament. Kimu, uh, Kimuya to Keraito, if you, if you remember the drift. Yeah. So for me, I believe... Um, CSS must be drawn from parliament. It was a way better deal. There was more better relationship between the parliament, uh, parliament and the executive as opposed to now whereby I I even the president, remember the president was also a member of parliament who was frequent, mm -hmm. who was frequent in, um, in, in parliament. Mm -hmm. Remember even the leader of official opposition. House and that's why parliament, de even debates then were stronger because Raila was in parliament. Now Raila is influencing policy from, okay. from afar, mm -hmm. saying, uh, Achilo Ayako, go and say this. James Orengo, go and say this. But when he was in parliament himself, things could move. Right now you could see a clear yes or no. They, couldn't, I, they also would not be a stalemate on division of revenue. Mm -hmm. So let's draw uh, mem uh, CSs uh, from members of parliament or from senate because uh, they have a more a more wide portfolio they understand the legislature a bit and they also then understand the executive bit so they are better managers and if you look at track record of CSs who are once members of parliament today we still speak of them Peter Kenneth is not governor of Nairobi Peter Kenneth is not holding any position we still remember him Kereto Murongi is now Governor Meru County. We still talk to him regarding the constitutional affairs. Mm -hmm. All right. Be before we look at the comments, uh, what people are saying on social media, I, I, I want to bring an argument I had about the CSs being the technocrats vis-a-vis uh, -vis the, being the, the member of parliament. In terms of service delivery, Kitambo Mtu alikuwa akio for services based on my people will not vote me in if I don't do this. Now, do you think the services have gone down because you're trying to decentralize everything? Um, I'd say yes, the services are, have gone down because you don't have a mandate, a particular mandate to, to the people. If you had a particular mandate to the people, if you knew that I'd have to go back to the uh, people of Meru and ask them to vote me in, mm -hmm. then I would be more deliberate in my efforts and in uh, in bringing money. Mm -hmm. That's that's one angle of, uh, of it, and which I support. Then the other, the devil's advocate, mm -hmm. they say now that I have no specific portfolio. I'd want to develop uh, Kenya. If you remember the Google balloons, they began in Baringo, which means I would develop Kenya. If I'm a CS, I would not care where I come from mm -hmm. and I'm gonna offer if I come from coast or northeastern I don't care I'm gonna issue service delivery because anyway after all I'm not going to ask for votes so I'm gonna be genuine in offering of services but then if you look at that there's a lot of scatter scatter in terms of um, 
what exactly have you done but you know if you are cs and you would come back and mm -hmm. it's even true i believe for the people of like baringo who see someone like uh, sorry elge omara to see someone murkomen as former sml and they would ask wewe sasa ni sml lakini umetuletea nini you you get that kind of thinking mm -hmm. so css are not subject to that but then it's the same thing because they are not accountable to anyone but the president that allows them to do what they want which disadvantages the citizens so for me watoke parliament all right let's hear what people are saying and i would like you to weigh into some of these comments we have victor marcia is saying um, a lot of changes are needed to be done to the constitution example is health services education water and roads should be taken to national government because most county government are so weak and most corrupt who will speak about corruption being devolved and then we have i is continues to say alego say fully present as usual from alego say thank you so much mm, say the same person okay something else uh, no need to revisit instead government should be focused on economic growth until the country becomes stable this is philly jones minor uh -huh. let's get someone else uh vincent sirgo sigoel keeps chirchir from nandi county uh olesos keben hmm. okay thank you so much for watching uh where paul thank you for watching I, Isaac, that's total waste of resources. At the bottom line, choose wisely. Okay, the constitution or the leaders. Okay, good morning. Watching live and direct um, out uh, in the Ngeni Kisau Makweni County. Thank you so much for wa watching Augustine Kefia. Uh, Jera skipping a teach from Cherota Kiyo EMC morning. My opinion is that current constitution has no problem. No need to mutilation. So you in Kamana Sema your referendum kwanza ikai, the BBI ikai. All right, I think I've made I, I I read those. Now this one who says a lot of change needs to be done to the constitution. Do you think corruption was among services or the components that were devolved. We have seen uh, the three W's, that is Wambora was the first one, he had Waigoro and Waititu. Mm. <laughs> and now we have Sonko, yes. uh, which uh, we're waiting on the case to what will go on. We don't know, mm. we'll see the results. Mm. Now, do you think devolution was as well devolved? Uh, corruption, I mean. Yes, that's like, yeah, yeah. I believe that corruption was devolved because even as much as we are fighting even for more money to the counties, I mean, there's a lot more than uh, begs the eye. If you look at the Auditor General report, you mm -hmm. will be flabbergasted. There are limits to which, uh, for example, like there are limits to which uh, county governors should, pend, should spend, mm -hmm. but they are wasting money. Mm -hmm. uh, there is, if you look at in terms of uh, appointments, mm -hmm. in terms of appointments, there's a lot of nepotism, people, people who are being... Um, given jobs when they are not qualified so you can imagine the, the impact on uh, quality service delivery mm -hmm. if you look at the tuffles between mcas in, in fact that's when you see the true colors if you remember the waigoro case when the uh, it was the mcas versus the governor mm -hmm. they they were comp in fact people were happy with the COVID, when covid came and they're like now nobody's traveling because mm -hmm. you remember the amounts uh, 10 million traveling to a b c d you're asking so you travel what did you bring to the people and benchmarking and benchmarking especially mcs loved to go to rwanda every now and then benchmarking <laughs> and when you come to nairobi nairobi is still as dirty as ever yet you wonder what they are going to do in rwanda mm -hmm. uh, especially kigali the cleanest city in africa so uh for me i believe that uh, corruption was devolved and it would explain the reason why people with track record massive big track record in national government want to go back to county government what do they want to do to manage mm -hmm. a bigger portfolio of money mm -hmm. to to have um more of their people at their pockets and of course to to if, even when you look at the awarding of tenders i mean it is it is crazy you remember sakaja introduced the agpo Ag, agpo bill whereby 30 percent of the tenders should go to young yeah, uh, young yeah. people mm -hmm. youth people with disability that is still when you when you look at the audit when you look at uh, what the auditor general has to say yeah uh, young people have not benefited from the tender so yeah it's devolved corruption it's still the same uh, the same werewolves in sheep's clothing. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Now, as we wind up, how big or small is the gap between the promises in the constitution and the deliverables? Um, 
I believe that's a question on implementation. Mm -hmm. uh, the constitution I'd say is perfect, but kwa ground vitu ni different. Mm -hmm. In specific regard to that, uh, we are not, we are, for some reason, we are unable to implement the constitution. If you look at the chapter on integrity, some of these governors would not even, should be here. If you look at Waigoro, sorry to say, if you look at the track record of NYS, mm -hmm. Look at the track record. You look at Waitito. He had grievous, uh, scandalous past. Sonko himself, if you remember, he gave us the story where he was at Shimo Latewa as a prisoner. Mm -hmm. So you wonder, uh, how does ESCC, because for you to, to, vie, for, to be a civil servant mm -hmm. and for you to be in a position of political leadership, you must get clearance from the five institutions, mm -hmm. ESCC, Certificate of Good Conduct, mm -hmm. and you remember... Yeah, yeah. And you remember, like, for the certificate of good conduct, it, quote, unquote, Kibisho had refused to give Sonko the certificate of good conduct. Sonko went and stayed in Jubilee House for two weeks crying with goons, if you remember properly. Mm -hmm. And he was given the certificate of good conduct. Yet you wonder what good conduct. So it's like these uh, institutions, we've just put them as a rubber stamp. We have even the issue of KRA, you must have KRA clearance. Mm -hmm. Yet we know there are members of parliament who've run businesses and they are in massive um, tax grievance. Mm -hmm. They are not paying taxes at all, at all, at all. Mm -hmm. So uh, I believe the chapter of integrity is quite perfect. But when it comes to implementations, mm -hmm. things are very different. And who is supposed to interpret the constitution for us? It's the judiciary. Mm -hmm. So when I say that the, I, I feel like the judiciary has performed below par, the judiciary has performed below par. Mm -hmm. we, we, we have, under the judiciary, we have other... Uh, helping uh, bodies like the DCI and the DPP. As far as corruption is of concern, do you think they have done enough? Because the cases go to court and then you hear there is no enough evidence. What are you telling us? For me, I believe the DPP is uh, doing quite a good job. I just, uh, I know for you to be convicted, it has to be beyond a reasonable doubt. And the DPP has, of course, to bring uh, cases of significant magnitude. But I still feel like, I still the courts have failed us. But in terms of DPP, we all know, everybody can tell that mm -hmm. uh, things are different and we are in the right track. But the courts, uh, the judiciary has to up its socks. All right, final comment, as you tell us whether we need to, re to amend the constitution or not. Uh, my final comment would be, when it comes to the referendum, it will be a yes or no question. It will not be bulky. It, is, it will not be as reading the whole book on the constitution. It will be. It will come to a question of yes and no. And it, the, the the final statement will be so obvious. As I told you, for example, do you want the increment of uh, allocations to county government from fifteen percent to perhaps forty percent, mm -hmm. or should the leader of official opposition be funded by the taxpayer? Or do we need a position of prime minister, deputy prime minister, uh, things of that nature? Mm -hmm. And most probably your answer will be yes. Because if you look at the specific clause, the positions of prime minister and deputy prime minister, we know Kenyans kuna mtuetu, mtuetu, mtuetu. When we create an inclusive government, I believe that mm -hmm. it's better when everybody is on board. For example, my ideal creation will be Someone from Luya, for example, Mudavadi or Wetangula, let the Luya nation decide mm -hmm. one of them. Maybe someone from Central, someone from Northeastern, a, a more of inclusive government. That one I would support. Mm -hmm. But if it comes to things like regional governments that I've seen being, um, being, pro, uh, by, being supported by... Current former, governors. <laughs> yes. Uh, I, I don't think I, uh, that one I can support because the taxpayer is really suffering. You can imagine the pinch of the taxpayer's regional government to sustain mm -hmm. people in government who you would find have not even performed as governors in the first place. Exactly. Thank you so much, Anita, for finding time for us and trying to put things into perspective as far as the 2010 constitution is of concern. Ten years down the line, we've seen your comments, we've seen your reactions, and I'm hoping moving forward things will change. Whether the constitution will be amended remains to be seen, with Baba saying reggae must continue. And we have other factions who say reggae will stop. We wait and see what happens next. Thank you so much for coming and back.
Akum, thank you so much for keeping us company. She has been my guest, Anita Nkirote, governance consultant and political analyst. I'll be coming up next with an interview or a discussion on mental health and wellness. Keep it Y254 and Y in the morning. I'm Dereva Hilaye. Good morning. Y254 Imagine Je, ungependa kujua jinsi ninavyojizuia kuambukizwa au kuambukizana